Greetings. My name is Stephen Feuerstein. I'm the Oracle Developer Advocate for PL SQL at Oracle Corporation. There are my email addresses, Twitter feed, blog, and YouTube channel. So check me out whenever you've got an extra moment and you want to learn more about PL SQL. What I'm going to talk about here is how you should let the PL SQL compiler do the heavy lifting with compile time warnings. Let's take a look. So the main idea is get the most out of your compiler. Sure. It'll tell you if you have compile errors, it'll make sure that your code is syntactically correct and it can be executed. But you can also use the compiler to help make sure your code is optimal. Take advantage of performance features you might not have been aware of, avoid predictable runtime errors, improve overall quality of code. These are all the things that the compiler can do for you if you take advantage of compile time warnings. Of course, it's much better to look at code than talk about what the compiler can do for you. So let's dive into SQL Developer. Now, first of all, I'm going to get rid of this first statement. I'll come back to that in a moment. Here's a piece of code that is completely valid. Oracle will compile this, and you will be able to run it. If I compile it, yes, we get warnings. I'll come back to that. But there are no PL SQL errors. I can execute this code. In fact, let's execute this code. Begin. PLW, and execute. Oh no, numeric or value error, character string buffer too small. So I run this program and I get an error and you know what? I bet you knew that. I bet you knew you were gonna see that error because it's pretty darn obvious, isn't it? I'm assigning ABC to a string with a maximum length of one. And you might've been saying to yourself for so many years, Oracle, why can't you figure that out too? You're so smart. Well, in fact, Oracle is super, super smart the software. And you can do that by turning on PL SQL warnings. So here's a statement that says, let's enable all PL SQL warnings. I execute that. And then I, I compile my program once again. Now let's take a look at these warnings at the bottom. I get three warnings. One is that an operation will raise an exception. Second, unreachable code. Third, an operation will raise an exception. We're going to focus on the 6017 uh, in this example, and I'll show you in more detail unreachable code, but I will explain why it's showing up here uh, in just a moment. So what you're seeing is that the Oracle compiler is, in fact, super smart, and it's detected that this string is too big for this declaration. This is going to cause an error. It also noticed, hey, you're doing a divide by zero. You're not supposed to do that. So what, it, what it's doing at compile time is saying, you know what, this code is correct. You can run it if you want to, but we guarantee you're going to get an exception. Notice it doesn't tell you where you're going to get the exception, just that you will. Now that, in a nutshell, is the power of compile time warnings. You ask the PLSQL compiler to give you feedback on the quality of your code, and it applies a whole bunch of different rules, and we'll take a look at those rules in the error messages manual in just a moment to give you advice about how to improve quality of code. In this case, the quality is a pretty significant one. You're going to get an error. In some cases, it's a little bit more uh, interesting or subtle. So for example, the second warning listed in this, in this strip here, unreachable code. So why do we see a message about unreachable code? Well, what it's noticed here is that if the exception is raised in this statement, you're never going to get here. So this line will never be executed. Oh, and by the way, it's also going to raise an exception. So that's a hint that Oracle also does unreachability analysis. Let's take a look at that. And I'm going to tell you how to get a hold of all my scripts and use them at the end of my presentation. Um, so I, I've enabled warnings, and I'm going to, again, compile. And I get two warnings, unreachable code and uncalled procedure. First of all, unreachable code. So what it's noticed here, and again, you can probably sort it out yourself because it's a simple program. L checking is declared to be false. So this is never true. This line of code never executes. And by the way, in another variation of unreachability, it's also noticed that I've defined a nested subprogram, but that program is never actually executed. So it just tells me. I removed it. It actually removed the code as it went through the compilation. That's part of the optimization process. So again, for a simple program like this, you could eyeball it yourself and say, huh, well, that's ridiculous. This code's never going to get executed. But in more complex scenarios, that's not going to be very easy to do. And so instead, you, can, you might never notice that entire blocks of code never can possibly theoretically be executed. So you just flip that switch, 
run it across your big packages, and you never know what sort of amazing surprises you are going to find. Let's take a look at one more example of the kind of warnings that you can get. Then I'm going to show you how to set it up in PL SQL Developer. We'll take a look at the error messages manual and sum up. So PLW5005, this is one of my favorite warnings in terms of why it should be an error instead of a warning. So I'll show you how you can do that too. So I'm going to declare it, define a function, a couple of functions. These are being called by my main function. And here's my main function, no return, uh, hint there. And when I compile this function, actually, let's run it first. So I will compile it. We'll ignore the warnings right now. But let's run it. I tried to run no return, and my script output shows me, oh no, function return without value. Now this is a runtime error that I would hope you never see, and I'm always embarrassed when I get it. What this is saying to a user who runs your code is, oh my gosh, Steven never even tried this code. If he tried it, he would have noticed it doesn't even return a value. So it's a very embarrassing kind of error to get. And of course, we can now flag it with the PL SQL compile time warning. So now when I compile, take a look. Subprogram no return returns with that value. It doesn't tell me what line of code is the problem. Now we can look at this code and say, here's the problem. There's no return here. But it doesn't try to do that kind of analysis. It simply says by the time you get here, there's a chance that through one branch of logic, one flow, you might not have executed a return at all. The classic solution here, by the way, is to have a single return statement as the last line of your function body. And then instead of returning all over the place, you simply assign values and so on and so forth. But again, it's flagging a compile time, a real serious problem with the design of your code. You can then go in and fix it and make sure that you never get the function returns with that value runtime error. So a whole bunch of warnings are really critical stuff. Some of them are perhaps a little bit more along the lines of a nuisance for you. For example, I often get this one. 5018, no return omitted optional auth ID clause. So as many of you probably don't know, there's an auth ID clause for procedures, functions, and packages, which define, which sets it up as definer rights or invoker rights. It's a feature, invoker rights is a feature that not many developers use, so they don't add the auth ID clause. It's good, it's good to put it here because it's a way of defining explicitly that this is running under definer rights, but also it's a reminder to other people who come along that there's a feature that this clause relates to, and they might go look it up and learn about something they can do with PL SQL, which is another really nice aspect all around to compile time warnings. I'll give you another example of that. I'm going to make this parameter in out. Compile. Now I get, oops, now I get a silly error because I've introduced some code that forces a real compile error. And Let's see. Okay. Now you see we have another warning, 7203. Parameter check-in may benefit from the use of the no copy compiler hint. Because I've set it up to be an in-out parameter, Oracle's going to do a copy in and copy out, which can give you some overhead and performance drag. And if you add the no copy hint, you will avoid that copy in and copy out and possibly make your code run faster. My point here is that again, the compile time warnings are an opportunity for you to learn more about PL SQL. You might never have heard of no copy, but if you use warnings, now you have learned about it, or you at least have a heads up about it, you can go explore further. One more thing for the 5005. If you said to yourselves, boy, I hate getting that function does not return value error. I wanna make sure that my function can't compile uh, when it has that warning, I can say error 5005, alter my session, compile my code, and now take a look. Now it says PLS 5005, subprogram no return returns with that value. Instead of PLW, it is no longer a warning. It is now a hard compile error. I cannot use this program unless this warning is addressed, unless I make sure that there's a return on every branch, which I could do really dumbly here. I could say return null, which is probably not the thing to do. Now I no longer have the error 
or warnings. So if you find some warnings that you think are super critical that you never want to see manifested in your production code, set them up to be errors, which leads me to showing you how you can set things up inside SQL Developer to use warnings all the time and how you can get even really radical and extreme. So if I go to Oracle PL SQL De Developer Preferences and I'll type warning, go to PL SQL Compiler, notice now I have a UI interface to the different aspects of enabling warnings. So I can set them to all informational severe. These are different categories. But what I could say here is, for example, I could say enable all warnings as errors. And this would mean that any time I try to compile code, I would have to get an absolutely clean response from the compiler before I am able to compile my code and use it. I would have to add the auth ID clause. I would have to make sure that I don't have unreachable code. I would have to make sure, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, it's very easy to use uh, warnings inside SQL Developer. You can set it up here once, and then every time you log in, these settings will be applied. Uh, I encourage you to give this a try. It's a pretty radical step, but at least you could say enable all and aim for a clean compile, even if it doesn't stop you from running the code if you don't have time to fix all the warnings you get. Okay, so I've covered the basics of how compile time warnings work, how you can set them up in SQL Developer to be enabled and even set them all to be errors. Now let's take a look at how you can view all the different warnings that are supported by Oracle. There's a, a manual called the Error Messages Manual in the set of books for database. So check out the Oracle Help Center, drill down into the books for 12C or your version, and then look up error messages. And here you'll find all the different categories of error messages from Oracle. And if you look for PLS, you'll find the PL SQL compile time errors. These are all the errors that the compiler might raise. And if you look at PLW, now we're into the warnings. So these are all the different warnings that the PL SQL compiler currently supports. And I strongly suggest that you spend some time looking through this list and getting a sense of all the different things that Oracle will check for. And also, again, it's an educational experience. You learn about things in the PL SQL language that you might never have discovered otherwise. So you can do it via compiling your code and being warned, or you can even proactively check out this document and, uh, and learn more about the PL SQL language. Let's wrap up. So some takeaways. Take full advantage of compiler features and learn more about the language as you go. So the Oracle PL SQL compiler is very powerful. It'll compile your code. It'll automatically optimize your code. It'll give you compile time warnings. It'll even give you conditional compilation, which I'll cover in another video. Experiment, try it out. Try enabling all warnings. Aim for a clean compile every time. And if you want to get radical, go big. Enable all warnings as errors and require, absolutely require, clean compiles. Give it a try. See how it works. I honestly admit I have not done that myself. It's a bit scary. Now, I've shown you a number of different scripts, the PLW files, and you can download all of those from the Oracle Learning Library, the PL SQL Learning Library within it at oracle.com slash OLL slash PL SQL, download the, the demo zip file, and then you have access to everything that I showed you today, and you can try it out yourself. Thanks for joining me, and happy PL SQL coding.